What's going on, uh, YouTube? Um, my name is Krish, for those of you that don't know me, and I play in a band called Osiris uh, from Canada, Alberta. Uh, we're kind of like a progressive epic metal band, so do check us out. And uh, I want to thank you for joining me on my channel here today. So, the purpose of this tutorial is just to quickly show you kind of how to make your own template um, to start uh, Get Good Drums Invasion, uh, kind of already routed to um, a bunch of different mic outputs that will go directly into audio tracks. Uh, the reason I do this is because when I'm writing and arranging stuff, you know, I make lots of changes to the drums kind of thing, and then before I go to mix or cut the final guitars or anything else, I like to take the audio drum samples over because it's uh, less of a resource hog. Uh, and this way it's already set up so that once you know my arrangement's kind of done, I can just print the drums like a performance into audio and then I can take it and edit it. Uh, so I'm just going to explain how I do that. And I've also provided a link below a stereo routed version and a mono routed version. And the reason I've done both is because some people when they're editing drums, they like mono mics on things like shells or spot mics, uh, the kick mics and all the snare mics. I myself am fine with stereo, so I just do it that way. And just as a quick caveat as well, there's some kind of uh, routing issue anyways in uh, Cubase and Contact right now where to get the mono channels out of contact to have sound, you have to route all 16 stereo channels anyways. So my workaround there is just to use stereo channels. But in this quick little walkthrough, I'll build this template from the ground up in stereo, and then down below you can just download the link and use it, along with the drum map for Cubase. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so you have your new empty project. First thing you're going to do is add your rack instrument either through this view if you have this selected here in the side view uh, you can add it here into your vst menu you can hit f11 or you can do it to the studio menu your vst instruments okay so you add your rock add your rack instrument which in this case is contact now this is kind of what my default outputs look like I'm going to give to you either the mono routed that I talked to before or the stereo routed, but yours might look like this even. If it's not showing up, you just click up here and hit outputs. So I'm going to route them in stereo for this example. So we're going to add 19 stereo channels, one for every mic, starting at strike out one, delete existing channels before creating new ones, and you can make it your default configuration, which is pretty handy. Next thing you do is you name your mics. So this will be uh, kick sum, kick sub, etc. I'm going to speed this part up. Okay, all of our channels are now named within the contact plugin. You're going to hit the exclamation mark, reloads the plugin, and then makes these outputs available under these names, which is kind of handy for the next part because you're going to drag in the invasion or your PNV or Matt Halpern pack or the MM pack. And then if you go right into here, you can just click, that one says loaded, you can just click multi out advanced and it'll pick up all the channels. If you set them up this way to go kick, snares, racks, spot mics, and then symbols. It's gonna pick them up, you'll see it's already lined up, kick some, kick up, kick triggers, uh, overheads, room close, room far, snare top, bottom trigger all go into their own channel, all the racks and floor tones go into their own channel, overheads, rooms go into the same place. Uh, sometimes here, if all of these are selected, it might have routed them all into one channel. You just basically wanna click down here so you can select one and just make sure hats, X hats, ride, effect symbols, overheads, rooms close and fars are going uh, to their own channels. And then you just go over here, and then you activate uh, the first 16, which are the defaults, and then you have to activate um, the next three. So it'll be six pairs of monos uh, to get all of your outs. And you just hit that. They're unnamed, unfortunately, there is a way to make them pop out named, but that way you'd have to save 
this is your default view kind of thing, and then it would pop it out. So actually, let's do that, because uh, that's probably easier. So let's say you've done this routing here, and then, okay, so you've named all your outputs in the bottom here, uh, and contact, what you want to do now is save the current output selection as default for all formats. What this does is it lets you reload the plugin. You get rid of that. This is especially handy if the main thing that takes up the most of your routing is this, and for me it is. You're gonna add a rack instrument again. I'm just gonna add contact. And what you'll see now is that your output sections here are already named to all your mics, which is very, very handy. So then you drop an invasion, And then all you have to do once it loads is do the multi-out advanced routing. We'll just give it a sec. Okay, multi-out advanced. And just double check, make sure, yeah, kick some sub, trigger all on the right mics, overheads and rooms, overhead in the rooms, snares are all mic right, toms are all mic right, spot mics, Fucking, fucking A. Beauty. So you go here, and you activate all those mic tracks. Now, the benefit of this is that you hit them all, and they're already named. This is cool. Now what you have to do is you have to add a bus for all of the different mics. This is just for the parts so that you can right away uh, record them into their individual tracks without having to do renders in place or bounces. It's just, I, I prefer it this way. So you start by adding three kick tracks, and then you can name them um, some kick sub, and then kick trigger. Now, you'll notice what I'm doing here is when I have these things highlighted, I'm just hitting tab. Don't hit enter, because then you have to reselect the, uh, the box to start typing in your, uh, your name for your, your bus. I'm gonna add Okay, now you've created all of your buses. And as I said, this step is just so that you can route these into individual audio channels. So now what you can do is either from here, select them all, hold ship, and select your first bus, or you can do it from this pane as well. So we'll do it this way. You go into your inputs, or rather your outputs, and you'll click this first bus, and you'll see that for every channel, it's now grabbed its consecutive uh, correct bus for all your mic channels. So we're done with this portion of it. Now you, you basically have to add all of your audio tracks. So we'll make sure they're in the right configuration. In this case, we'll do stereo so that we can actually use stereo buses as inputs. And we're going to add 19 microphones because that's what we have. We're going to name them and once again, I'll speed this part up. As you can see, I have a couple of spelling mistakes, so I'm trying to do this fast. Anyways, so I take these and I throw them into a new folder. This just allows me to monitor and arm and record uh, easier. Now, for the input side of it, there is no uh, quick way to kind of select them all and have it cycle through all available buses for inputs. So that part's a little bit annoying. Basically, you're gonna grab every single output bus and use it as a input for each consecutive matching mic. So kick some, get some, sub, get sub, trigger, gets trigger. I'm gonna quickly go through this and speed this up. Okay, so now you see each one of your output buses from contact is an input on each one of these audio channels. So what that allows you to do is go up here, hit monitor, hit arm for record, and once again, just to show that it works, and you just start playing it with the beat. And there you go, you've made a uh, template file. Last thing to do is just hit save as template, and, uh, and your template is, is saved. So yeah, so there we go. Thanks for checking out my channel, and once again, like I said, uh, check out my band Osiren. Um, Check out the link below. 
get your copies of these two presets already color coordinated. You can color coordinate them how you want. There's also a drum map in there, which just to quickly talk about drum maps here, which I'm including with this, I've laid out my drum map so that when I edit uh, drums, it's it's laid out with cymbals first, um, and then it goes into toms, snares, kicks, and then hi hats and rides. That's just the way I like to look at it when I'm. Okay. To load a drum map in Cubase, you select your MIDI instrument that's going to contact. Here it'll usually say no drum map, but you're gonna select invasion. The first time you load it in, you'll have to actually go through functions and load. You'll load the invasion drum map, and then it'll be available in this project or in this template as a drop down. The cool thing about the drum map is right now it's assigned to any channel, so you just send that instrument to a contact. Uh, Get good drums instance in order to play. But the cool thing is, if you have two dissimilar libraries, let's say Invasion and P and B, uh, what you can do is set the drums you want to trigger just in Invasion through here on like channel one, and then you can, for example, through here on channel one, and then you can select any drums you want to hit off of just P and V to channel two, and then all you have to do is make sure that in your instrument setup here, this will be like. Kind of the snapshot if you hit info you can change one to a different midi channel so you don't have to disable drums or kind of try to like combine them after you can just have one playthrough and it'll pick up you know shells from here symbols from here rooms from both whatever you want any kind of combination so yeah so that's drum maps you know in like three minutes explained uh but yeah anyways thanks for checking out the video like i said Check out my band Osiren and uh, check out the link below to get your drum map and your two templates and let me know what you thought and let me know if some of those issues I mentioned earlier with routing out 16 stereo channels you've encountered and you know how to fix. That'd be awesome. Cheers and thanks.